Good morning guys and welcome back to a not so pleasant day here at Berham Engines. So guys, we have got another couple of um, techie videos today to put in our video. Not so much whinging today, only that we have got a Peugeot in, I think it's a 207, running the N12 BMW in engine, which is in the minis, I believe. I'm sure a few of you in the comments will, um, will correct me if that is not the correct engine code, but I think that's what it is. It's the one with the Valvetronic system um, with the dodgy springs at the back there. And the reason for today's thumbnail and title is to really say that, um, yeah, this is exactly what happens when a customer tears the top of the engine to bits without really thinking about it and doesn't have the correct tools. So the car is into us today for us to rectify that and get those springs in position. Let's head over to the workshop and we'll show you exactly how we do that. Oh, and to all you non-subscribers, please hit that subscribe button, guys. It really helps us like and hit the notification bell. Please head over to our website by hitting the link in the description below. Cheers. Right guys, what we've got here is a little Peugeot and it's got the same valve spring set up in the, on the camshafts as the BMWs. Um, so as you can see, I've got three in. Now this is a usual, it's come from the garage where one of the mechanics has undone this top bolt here to release the springs to sort of um, get it all apart. And it's sort of gone pudding um, and they haven't got the tool and they can't get the springs back in. So the problem you have is when they when you do this one up, you cannot get the arms behind these rockers. You've got two rockers on this. You've got a rocker underneath that sits between the hydraulic lifter and the spring. And then you've got a rocker on top that is actuated um, by this bar at the back. And that is the sort of VVC system on this engine. Um, so as you can see, they brought it in for us to get these springs back on. We've got three on already, and I'm just gonna show you how we get the other ones on. So we've got a spring here and a bolt. Um, this is the special tool. Now, the idea of this tool predominantly is to close that spring up so we can get the bolt in the top, the clamping um, bolt for the spring onto that top platform when the, the, the spring levers are behind the rockers. Now, the idea of the spring is to pull that rocker there between the cam and the bottom rocker into the camshaft. Um, and hold it in position. So what we do is first of all, we load this spring into this jig. Right, so we have this special tool in the open position. And then what we do is we sit that in that location there. And we've got a knob at the back here, which we wind in. And what that does is hold that top bit in position. So once that's clamped up, we then pull these prongs over on the tool there and we shut it until the stop goes on and it holds itself. So you can see now the spring is in the correct position there. Otherwise you'd never get that bolt done up in the, in the top platform. So then the next step is to, we want to undo these two bolts and take that platform off. You know, that, all that does is hold the two rockers um, in position and stop them from going for either left or right. So I'll take that off. Now I'm not sure whether this process, the way I do it, is the way you're meant to do it, but it's, it's the way it works for us, but it's a bit of a, there's a little bit of a specific way you you have to do it really with this regards to this top platform. So you've obviously got two bolts that hold it on. You've got the bolt at the back, which is a longer bolt, and that goes through this cap into the base of the platform, and then the front one goes just into that cap. So we'll put that one aside. And what we've got to do, keeping those in the position that they are, this is the tricky bit. You've got to tr try and get these spring pongs behind that, behind those rockers and push them down the back without everything sort of getting dislodged. And just looking behind, you've got to make sure that, that's it, those prongs are sitting behind it, 
the sort of locators where they're meant to go on the rockers and we just hold that keep that there in position then what we've got to do is at the same time just lifting that a bit you've got to get that there in position and the reason for that is if you if you don't have that in um, before you release this it all sort of just wants to jump forward or the rockers want to jump at the top but you can't get the prongs at the back of those rockers with that in so that's the reason you have to sort of do it like this so what now what we do is we take the front bolt which is the shorter bolt and put that in the front and do this up finger tight as much as you could possibly do it Probably best to make sure the thread's pretty good before you start this because you can only do it by hand. Then once that's done as much as you can, we then put the back bolt into the top of the spring up here. And do that one, same again. Right, now what we do is I think it's safe to release this. Just, be, just release that and make sure that at the bottom, down the bottom there, that the prongs are in the locators right at the back where they should be. And then if we undo this, we should be able to take that out and it's all in position. So now what I do is we do just do the, nip the back one up, obviously torquing this up in a minute, and then we put the back bolt in here. Funny looking bolt that. In it. Just nip them up there. And the final thing, obviously before torquing those bolts, make sure that the rollers on the rockers here are in their location underneath that black clamp plate you see that oh, yeah. sometimes you can find that these rollers are either one side or the other you've got to make sure that they're in and there we go all in all right Lee what are we doing today so what we're going to do today Paul is we're going to set up the vernier poly on this crossflow engine so this is one of the last things to do on this engine I know I've showed you setting up vernier before on an engine on the Cosworths um, but this being a push rod the cam the camshaft is in the block the advantages with that in theory, when you remove the cylinder head and put it back on, it's not going to affect the timing um, once the vernier is set up. Once it's set up, in theory, it's, it's done and dusted. So the cam we've got in here is a stage four, is that right? Yes. It's a 264 cam, which is a full race, really. Um, it's not the highest one you can go, but it's the second highest one. Really, in a, in a push rod engine, when you've got the camshaft in the block, you shouldn't really need a vernier pulley, but obviously if you're putting an uprated cam in there, it may time up different to a standard one, so it's always good practice to put a, uh, a vernier on there. We've assembled it all. First thing we do is we slacken all these bolts off and just tighten one. And I've marked the one there with the black marker, uh, which we're just nipping on. The rest are all slack, and I'll tell you why that is in a minute. We put our disc on and do this nut up here. Um, so that is securely fixed and then what we do is we attach a marker here with a point on the end you can see it's just a bit of welding wire that we've adapted um, to mark true TDC and obviously we've got our DTI gauge here which obviously being a, a cast block we can magnetize onto that um, and that is to check the lift on the valve in a minute so first things first we're up around TDC because you can see here you've got the key weight up at um, 12 o'clock. So the next thing we do is we want to find true TDC on the piston. So we wind our little, um, our adapter here into the plug hole, as far as it will go in number one. And then you can see, as we push that down, that is now touching the piston. So we, we just nip that in there. Then what we do, Paul, is we, if you watch this gauge here, I'm gonna turn through 
until we find TDC. You'll know when we get to TDC because the gauge will stop moving there. All right, but what we want to do is find true TDC, which is going to be in the center of the dwell. So on the rock, you always have maybe sort of two, three, four degrees turning of the crank where the piston won't move at all. It's just where it's coming to the, the top. We want to find top dead center, which is the center of that dwell. So if we go back slightly, and just before we get to TDC, sort of about there, it doesn't really matter where, we'll set that on zero, okay? Then what we do is we put our marker down here. Right, so that pointer now is pointing at top dead center. So what we want to do is we want to turn through until the pointer goes up to TDC, then back to that zero. Very, very slowly. So there we go, and the stationary point, that's back to zero. Then we look down at our marker and see how much it's moved. And you can see there it's moved eight degrees. So we want to half that and put this pointer to four degrees. And that there is true top dead center. So if we just go back and then go forward, that is the center of the dwell point on the crankshaft. And that is top dead center trued up, all right? So we can now take our DTI out of the plug number one. And if we go over to our, our Kent book, because this is a Kent camshaft in this one, because the customer supplied it. Normally we obviously go to uh, Newman. So we're on, we're on a 264, aren't we? So we're a 264, which is a Clubman's full race. And you've got all the data here. Now the bit of data we're looking for is the, the angle of the crankshaft to which the, you'll have full, left, full lift on the inlet valve, okay? Mm -hmm. um, so what we want to be doing is putting a DTI on that valve or on the um, spring or retainer. And you want to be finding the center of the dwell, the same as what we just did in, on the crankshaft. And this angle here is it's 103 degrees. So when you turn the, the crank 103 degrees, you should have full lift on that valve, right? Mm -hmm. So what I normally do is if we turn this to not quite 103, if we go to say 80, again, it doesn't really matter. And you can see it's coming to the full compression of, of the inlet valve here. What we do, put the, put the DTI gauge on the top of that retainer. It is a little bit easier on the side valves because obviously it's a, it's a straight up valve head anyway. And you're not trying to sort of do it at an angle and underneath the camshaft. It's more difficult trying to do it on an overhead cam because you've got the cam in the way of the bucket. Right, so what we do is if we same as what we did on the crank, we zero this gauge, okay? Now we want to continue to turn that crank until we go up and then back to the zero, okay? So we're going up and then back round to the zero. All right, now what we do is bearing in mind we're on 80, we want to count how much it's moved. It's gone to 170, so 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Half 90 is 45, so we want to go back to 125 degrees, that is at the minute. So we want to go to 103, so we are 22 degrees out. Ooh. That's quite a lot. It is. So what I'll do is I'll just slacken off our bolt that we've done up on the pulley. We want to go from 170, if we go back to 150-ish, 152, that's 20 odd degrees. Just do that one up again, nip it up. Then what we're going to do, we're going to go all the way around. 
and again. This time we're going to go to 80 again on the crankshaft. We're going to zero that gauge. Okay, now we want to go through again until it goes back to zero. There we go. So now we are at 130, about 128. So 90, one, two, three, four. So that's 48. So if we go half of 48 is 24. So if we go back 24, we're going to be 24, 104. So we're almost there. So what I'll do, we're one degree out. So if we just undo that and go back one degree, nip that one up and we'll go through again, two turns. This time, back to 80. Okay. Zero that gauge. And we'll go through again until it gets back to the zero. This time we are 46. Yeah, 46. So half of 46, 23, take 23 off that, and we're at 103 degrees. So that we, that's it, all set up. And you can see, if we nip all these up now, obviously once we've got the timing disc off, we'll tighten them all properly. And that pull is how you set the vernier pulley on the side valve. Very good, mate. And if you have a look at this pulley now, you can see how much out if that was dead in the centre, that would be pretty much how much a, a standard pulley would be set. Yeah. Um, but because you're off centre there, you can see that you're probably going to be two, three degrees out if you use the standard pulley and didn't set the vernier up. So, very good, mate. Thank you, mate. Well, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you on Monday. Cheers, guys.